need to mod my PSP suddenly came about because of a future video, and I was shocked to see how easy it is. Essentially, only several files copied to a memory card are required to fully self-mod the system. This allows Homebrew to be installed, emulation of other systems, and digital backups of PSP titles to be played. Handy, considering it's now near impossible to purchase digital releases on the PSN through the system. PSP self-modding has come a long way over the years, and as it stands, every model of the PSP is now moddable. The only other requirement is the before-mentioned memory card. Personally, I own a 3000 series. You can check your own by accessing the battery compartment and reading the sticker under the battery. Don't worry about the number at the end, which in my case is 2, this only denotes the region. First, we'll need to update the system to the most recent firmware. As of recording, that's 6.61. I have doubts Sony will ever release something newer, but stranger things have happened. I said the exact same thing in my 3DS soft modding video, and you better believe Nintendo made that redundant. Anyway, you can check what version you're running by navigating to Settings, System Settings, and System Information. If yours is lower than 6.61, follow the link in the description for a tutorial on how to update. While in that same system settings menu, scroll up and enable USB Auto Connect for convenience, and you may as well select USB Charge 2. This will enable the PSP battery to charge while it's plugged into the computer. It won't be charging very fast, but you may as well. With those settings selected, plug the PSP into a computer by using a micro USB cable. Since you selected USB Auto Connect in the settings, the memory card should automatically appear as a removable device. Since the memory card that came with my PSP is only 2GB, I cleared out a bunch of media files from the previous owner. There were photos of light exposures at a location any West Aussie will recognise, the Bustleton Jetty. Which, fun fact, is the longest timber pile jetty in the Southern Hemisphere at 1,841 metres long. Nice. Here's me there a few years ago. Double nice. I also found a selection of, well frankly, straight up tunes. I needed the space and pay for a Spotify subscription however, so in the bin they went. As it stands, the best website to currently obtain the files for the soft mod is PSPunk.com. Their recommendations vary slightly depending on what model PSP you have, but the files I'm showing for my PSP 3000 appear to work on all models. But if in doubt, click the tab for your model and read through their instructions. Basically, one download is the custom firmware, while the other is the exploit that makes the magic happen. I downloaded the Pro PSP firmware for 6.61, and Infinity version 2.0.3 is the exploit. Both packages download zipped, so unzip them. They can then be deleted. On your PSP's memory card, navigate to the PSP folder, and then the Game folder. If the Game folder isn't there, create it, naming Game in all capitals. Back to the downloaded folder for the Pro PSP firmware, you'll find two folders named Fast Recovery and Pro Update. Copy these into the game folder on the PSP memory card. Additionally, in the Infinity folder you downloaded, navigate to the folder named Standard and copy the file within named eBoot. Although it goes without saying, if you have a PSP Go, copy the eBoot file from that folder instead. Copy this to a folder within the game folder on the PSP memory card called Update, all capitals. Again, create it exactly as named if it's not present for whatever reason. Now, disconnect the PSP from your computer using the safety remove program and fire up the PSP. Navigate to the game menu and choose Memory Stick. You will see several choices for Pro PSP firmware and Infinity, along with anything else stored on the memory card. Select Pro Update first. A basic black screen of white text will appear. Simply press the X button to install the firmware. After several seconds, you'll be prompted to press X again to reboot the PSP. Now, again check the firmware version. It should now say Pro C after 6.61. If it doesn't, launch the Pro Fast Recovery program from the game menu. Now launch the Infinity 2 program. For some reason, the video output function needs to be disabled while this is running, so we'll be switching to a camera view for this section of the video. Again, simply press the X button to install. Once it's done, press X again to reboot the PSP. Launch the fast recovery program, which will automatically direct back to the PSP's main menu. Now, launch Infinity 2 again and push the left D-pad. Select Pro CFW and press X. 
a circle will appear to the left of the text. Push the Home button and then X to navigate back to the main menu. To ensure the firmware is permanently installed, turn off the PSP completely by holding the power slider for 5 seconds. Once you turn it back on, check the firmware again and there should now be an infinity symbol next to the text. This means that you won't have to run the recovery program every time you turn the PSP on for the custom firmware to be present, which was the case for some models of the PSP in the past. Well done, the PSP is now fully modded. Told you it was easy. Let's discover what the PSP can now do. First, I'd recommend exploring the homebrew scene. There are hundreds of applications and games available for free online. A great website I found is called gamebrew.org. There is a large selection of management utilities, media players, and even different operating systems to choose from, but in the modern day of the smartphone, I assume most of you will be interested in the games. Again, there is a massive selection. There are your typical puzzle, racing, and platformer games, but also ports of games that never made it to the PSP like Fruit Ninja, Flappy Bird, CSGO, Doom, Halo Multiplayer, and even the first section of Half-Life, even if it is buggy. Do not attempt, 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 attempt to open the doors until the train has come to come to come to come to a complete halt at the station platform. Simply copy these downloaded folders to the game folder on the memory card and they should appear in that same menu. Although several games I tried appeared as corrupted data, it wouldn't launch. I have no idea why this is. Another cool feature unlocked is emulation. Again, there is a wide range of emulators to choose from, but I was drawn to the more advanced systems to see how the PSP handled them. Performance range from acceptable to straight up unplayable, but it's fun pushing the PSP to its limits. Again, copy the folders for these emulators to the game folder on the memory card. Follow the directions given for each emulator, but generally there will be a folder within where you copy the ROMs to. While I found Net your rosy compilations that are downloaded and installed with the same method as Homebrew, which is awesome, we also can't miss the fact that PS1 games can be played natively on the PSP. Most PS1 ISO files seem to play without the need for an emulation program, but an extra step is required back on your computer as they need to be converted. Download a program called PSX to PSP. This is available all over the internet to download, so Google it. Launch it in classic mode and load up your ISO of choice using the first field. In the next field, named output PBP folder, point it to where you want the exported file to save. While you can select background images, icons and music to show on the PSP for each game, this isn't compulsory. You can simply push the convert button and get on with your day. Copy the folder that gets spat out into the game folder on the memory card and that's it. It's Pepsi Man time. But I'm sure you would totally purchase the PS1 game on the PSP's PSN store if you could, right? Lastly, there is the ability to play PSP ISOs, which again, will totally be legit backups of your physical collection, won't they? Well, I didn't hear anything otherwise, so this is how you do it. Copy the ISO, wherever it was obtained, but instead of the game folder on the memory card, copy it to the ISO folder at the root of the memory card. It should now appear in the game section on the PSP along with everything else. But that's it, have fun. Thank you for watching this video to the end and pipping my analytics.